All right. Do you have yours in order? What? My... Yeah, last year you came to this and you're like, I have them. They're not in any order. It's no big deal. <laughs> like my top five? Yes. No. You son of a bitch. But I can order it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you had a whole year. You had a whole year. Uh, Some of these I didn't even see until like a week ago. You just got to put numbers on five of them. <laughs> it's hard. You just got to put numbers on five of them. <laughs> so... One, it's two, so three, hard. four, five. That's it. It's so horrid. I know it's horrid. <laughs> horrid. It's so horrid. I did it myself. <laughs> it's horrid. You know when he did it? Like two weeks ago. there Bielza buddies and welcome back to the devil's cut a podcast about all the things that go bump in the night if it's spooky scary or spine tingling we're here to talk about it i'm your resident man boy possessed by a devil matt young and i'm here as always with the skeleton everyone should want in their closet eric rossi happy new year ooh, ooh. <laughs> 2023 is in a fucking grave it's dead but not forgotten no not forgotten <laughs> It, it's bar- it's it's probably with the amount of good movies you have it's more like a pet cemetery kind of bear <laughs> they'll come back we'll watch more of them uh but yeah we are here for another edition our our second annual end of the year best horror movie awards working title wow that's a bad title <laughs> yeah um well you know what i still you know we're in i don't want to get too solid right away with it anyway because it's bound to evolve right oh and, of course and if we like stick to a name now I we'll say be we married just do a working title until you're like, right you know right. until at, at least the first k followers you know <laughs> but yes we're here once again at the end of the calendar we've watched all the movies Mm-mm. we watched every <laughs> single movie that came out with the horror genre attached to it all of them I, I don't. What I is don't that like face? This, what are you making that face? I don't like this lie. I, I don't want to have to live with it because I, then I'm gonna have to. If we ever like meet people, they'll be like, "Oh, I listened to your end of the year 2023 episode, and you said you watched all the movies that year. How about this one?" And I'm gonna have to lie because I'm not gonna be able to. It'll be too awkward for me if I say I hadn't seen it because then the conversation will die. So I'll just I'll just nod and pretend I saw it. I have no idea what he's talking about. I don't want to live like that. <laughs> But uh, we are we are here once again to count down some of uh, our we're, we're going to call them top faves, top favorites. <laughs> top the, faves. These are not the the best of the year. Some of them are the best of the year, but these are the ones that spoke to us and individually. As always, if for anybody who is a regular listener, you know this is a very subjective podcast. We always let you know this is not our... We don't think this is fact. You're welcome to have your own opinions on the movies. We encourage it. So this is always just our... Me and Eric's opinions. <laughs> what we think it was the best movie for us. We got a lot to get to before we get to our, our top lists. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, I, I want to do, uh, I said it on the stream, so for anybody who hasn't been watching our streams on Twitch, you should start, because I say things there that carry over to here. You gotta, it's like, it's, I'm gonna start my own little Marvel canon, you know, where you, uh-huh, uh-huh. you have to watch my Disney Plus show, you have to watch the Twitch stream. You have to check my Snapchat stories. Yeah, there's a podcast, uh, series that ties into the movies, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> with that in mind... We're just going to go ahead and get this out of the way up top. We want to hear more from you guys. We know you guys are out there listening. I get the results. I get the numbers. I can see where you live. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. Reach out to us on any of the social medias. We are on Twitter and Instagram at the Devil's Cut Pod. Exactly how it's spelled. Mm-hmm. No punctuation. And along with that, you can find in the link 
or in the uh, description of this episode, there's a link to join our Discord. Mm -hmm. We would love to hear back from you guys. You know, even if it's just a, hey, I listened to this episode and it was bad. (laughs) Yeah. Come tell us. Well, we won't, we won't love it, but we will accept it. And Uh, appreciate you individually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So we, and we, yeah, in general, we would just love to hear from you guys what you, not just what you think of it, of our episodes but just of the movies we talk about in general if there's movies you would like to hear about old ones new ones like we we're open we'll t- this is this is the the formative years of the show so this is your chance to get in on the ground floor oh hell yeah <laughs> we don't just love talking to each other we also love talking to other people about horror yeah not as much but still not nearly as much hearts yeah for, <laughs> for it but uh, but yeah so this year uh, just like last year, we're going to be giving you uh, our individual top five horror movies. This year, I did uh, order them. from Because last year, it was just Pearl and the rest just kind of wherever. But you made <laughs> me order them this year, so I have an official ranking because we know how much you guys like lists. People love rankings. lists. So here we are. I'm people. But whereas last year, we just did – the episode was just our top fives, and that was it. But this year, I decided I wanted to go – one step further, and I've taken it upon myself to create a few um, sort of like uh, subcategory awards because we'll, you know, we're obviously going to have crown our top favorite from last year, which is going to be hard to beat Pearl. Hard to beat Pearl. And you know what? She is not going to want to give up the crown either. It's going to be no. Uh, it's going to be a real scene trying to get that from her. Because we obviously don't have the budget for a new crown every year. We have to take the old one. We have to take the old one away. So this is going to be tough. Um, But yeah, so I, again, I wanted to originally surprise you, Eric. I was going to, like, come in with the the categories and everything. But the more I thought about it, I was like, oh, well, he might want to kind of get in on that. Or at least maybe, if I don't know if you came up with extras on your own. Um, But... So I decided the surprise wasn't as important as, as keeping you in the know for the, for the episode. Seems fair. Seems fair. I have one. I have one award to give out at the end. Okay. I'm going to save two categories for last. So I'm going to go a little bit out, out of the order that I wrote them in because <laughs> I was just like a uh, stream of consciousness trying to figure out what possible award categories That's there fine. could be. We can find some fun award show like generic music and throw it in here mm-hmm. and uh, – Yeah. All right. So I'm going to start off the year with this category, which I deemed – I gave the title of Horror Patch Kids. Horror Patch Kids. Okay. (laughs) So this is going to be – this is an award for what what I thought was the best uh, child performance in a horror movie. Ah, a a notoriously hated – uh, uh, subcategory of horror actor it's is divisive. the child actor. It's divisive for sure. But I mean, you know, we, how many movies did we we covered two movies this year alone that, that were, were both bad, bad kids, child actors? We, kid <laughs> forward, terrible horror movies. Yeah, they, no one from Children of the Corn made it made it on this list. No. All right. Do so we have we, nominees? I do have multiple. Nominees. Oh, that's fun. Oh yeah, this is, I I wanted to keep it like really. Uh, it's so classy. Yeah, I was trying. I should have got a tux for the event. <laughs> All right, so for the category of Horror Patch Kids, the nominees are uh, Nell Fisher, and this is the actresses, the actors' names, mm-hmm. then their character, and then what movie they're from. Okay, okay, okay. So Nell Fisher as Cassie from Evil Dead Rise. Very good. This is our young girl whose favorite, whose item of choice in the movie was uh, the baby doll on the stick named Stephanie. Stephanie, yes. Stephanie wielded with with great success. I thought I thought she was a, a, a pretty adorable, not really at all annoying. Yeah. Uh, main character, which is hard is hard to to get across, but she did a really good job. Um, Vivian Lyra Blair as Sawyer Harper from Boogeyman. Okay, okay. Another, uh, sassy but not annoying, uh, a little precocious girl, you know? You know what's funny? a couple of them. Gun to my head, would have thought it was the same kid. (laughs) You know what? Very, very similar. Both in look and performance. They were both, like, sassy, fun little girls who didn't overstay their welcome. Yeah. (laughs) Um, this one I know is going to hit close to you. This is Woody Norman as Toby from Last Voyage of the Demeter. 
we got to see this kid's basically his whole life oh play out. Oh my right? god! The, yeah. He wasn't even. He was barely alive before the movie started. He was so young. Oh yeah, Toby. <laughs> From beginning to end, we saw this poor kid's whole life go by in a flash. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought he was. I thought he was a like real standout. And he this movie isn't on the list, but he was all in the same year. Uh, he was in Cobweb. Yes. And uh, again, just he just killed it, dude. Yeah, and he carried Cobweb. Way, I was about to say way more forward in Cobweb. Yeah, yeah, but he was pretty heavily featured. Like, he was, he might as well have been like secondary character. Of yeah, Demeter. Yeah, um, but outstanding performance from him. In, uh, in this is specifically the nomination is for the Last Voyage. Um, then we have I'm I don't know exactly how to pronounce this, but it, I believe it's Kristen Chu. As when from Knock at the Cabin. I don't think you saw this. One. I did see it. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So when the little girl in Knock at the Cabin, not the movie is less about her than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the scenes that she was in, she was still, um, uh, she acted her heart out, and uh, I think the movie would have been wouldn't have been the same if she, you know, it was it was a lesser <laughs> actress. You know, one of them shitty kids. One of them shitty run of the mill kids. Yeah, no. One of those no talent, uh, <laughs> one of those no talent hacks from the corn movie. <laughs> those no talent nepo babies. <laughs> uh, and the final nomination goes to uh, Shuya Surya as Mei Ying in the Meg Two: The Trench. Oh fuck! This is the same uh, actress who played the the daughter in the first one. They, she's just a little older now. She is the oldest one on this list because she was fifteen. But mm. I put her on the list because I feel like if you're not like if you're if you are a like teenager who actually is acting as the age group they really are like I you know I still count them as child actors like 15 I think is still there uh, I'm just happy that they used her and they didn't cast like some 28 year old like yeah, Asian yeah. actress to be to her, play yeah. another 15 year old. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she was she was pretty good in the movie. I wouldn't say. Um, it was like the best best performance, but I couldn't give like Toby uh, the, a second slot, you know. And it was there was not as many kid forward movies this year, so um, she was kind of like a, le- a late addition. I was like, "Fuck, I got to fill the rest of this out." Um, but yeah, so those are the nominees, and again, so I came up with this list, all these categories on my own. So I. Not I already gave the awards to all of them. Eric didn't have any input here. I feel like I'm watching the Grammys. I'm yeah, having so a great time. I, I, we should get the little like a camera pan to your face for when the and you're like either happy. I can't believe that they won. <laughs> um, and the award I I actually I also do I drew a sticker for the award and I named it. This is the the Crimson Pentacle. Ooh, that's I I drew a fun little sticker, but I'll show you later. And so the Crimson Pentacle for Horror Patch Kids goes to Vivian Lyra Blair as Sawyer Harper from Booger Man. Oh, it's a it's a tough it's a tough win to see g- not go to Toby. I know, but the you know, boy I, who lit on fire. He did light on fire, but I we got to see that uh, that girl. We got to see Sawyer get like tossed around the living room like she did <laughs> like eight different times by the boogeyman she really took a beating or well you know the, the stunt double did but whatever but she was also you know she was she was cute she was funny uh she didn't uh great on the uh the experience <laughs> yeah you know yeah all right cool what do we who, so yeah what do we got next <clears throat> all right we're gonna go back a page in my notes All right, here we go. This one's going to be fun. So we have, uh, this is the award for best creature design of the year. Oh. Yes, we had a number of creature features this year. Uh, and I felt like I needed to give the creature its own little category. Because yeah. it was such a it was such a good year for them. Yeah, we had such fun little guys. Yeah, great. It's, it's It was a great time for fun little guys. Uh, and, you know, feel free after, you know, we, we you can give me... Uh, the, the peanut gallery can give me what they thought should have been on the list if you think I'm missing one. But yeah, so for best creature, the nominees are Sawtooth Jack from Dark Harvest, mm-hmm. Dracula, specifically the Voyage of the Demeter Dracula. Oh, okay, okay. Um, 
it, the aliens from No One Will Save You. I couldn't really find an actual term. A trio. For, for we them. like a trio. Okay. And the boogeyman from the boogeyman. The boogeyman himself. <laughs> the huh? boogeyman himself. The titular boogeyman. Um, oh, and one and the final category is the uh, the Freddy Fazbear and Friends from oh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, you're giving them a, a blanket. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, and so the Crimson Pentacle for Best Creature in in what I think you'll find is an upset is the puppets from Five Nights at Freddy's. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This was this this was a little bit um this was a tough one for me. And I was using this at this award to show everybody to prove that even though I hated the fuck out of Five Nights at Freddy's I'm capable of being impartial. I think that it was a bad movie, but it had really, really good creature design. That is a very the, fair argument. The puppets were practical. Yes. And they were built, actual animatronics were built from the ground up to, to look like the skeletons. Get the fuck the, out. And then they built the exterior, and they built two suits of each. Ones that were didn't have the skeleton in them, and ones that did have that did, so that like if they needed to move around in the suit in the uh, on the set, like an actor could get in them. But they had actual animatronics; they just like full fully ground up. Oh my built. god, that's cool as fuck! I yeah, didn't know that. Ton, a ton of effort went into them, and they look also they look exactly like they are very on model. They're on they model, on brand. They look great. They look realistic. I think. That every other movie in this category movie was infinitely better than Five Nights, mm -hmm. but I will give credit where credit is due. They did a phenomenal job with the creature design. So I'm so surprised that it beats out the <laughs> Boogeyman because man, the hands when the hands come out of the mouth, I know. Oh, oh, I know. I it, if I wanted to give it to something else, but I didn't want to let my my own feelings on the movie as a whole clad my judgment i wanted to be an impartial we award love giver. objective journalism exactly <laughs> <laughs> journalism okay all now, right that being said maybe that means i weighted the vote in the other way <laughs> and i overcompensated but you know what that's that's for that's for 2024 matt to deal with fair all right next category is this is going to be for i i, I called it uh best dressed and this is for just like the most fashion forward villain the most like striking villain interesting yeah this is a series of three villain forward categories um yeah so so while this doesn't count i excluded creatures from this one that's why i gave them their own category mm -hmm. so this one is yeah just like the the killers that i thought like stood out and will be like remembered because they're just like an iconic looking visually distinct yeah they're bringing yeah. the look. They're bringing yeah. the drip. Exactly, exactly. And it's getting increasingly, it's an increasingly difficult uh, space to get noticed in. These true, days. true, you know, true, there's true. Lots of killers. There's lots of creatures, and it's getting, it's getting tough out there. So the nominees for best dressed villain are the angel from It's a Wonderful Knife. Of course. Fantastic design. Another lukewarm movie, but had a really cool looking killer. Absolutely. That helped save it. Um, John Carver from Thanksgiving. Ooh. It's good. I, it's very good. It's simple it's and very clean. Good. <laughs> Cue the, the Kingdom oh, Hearts music. Oh, Kingdom Hearts music. When, when you walk away. away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next nominee is Dracula from Renfield. Because we had two oh, Drac appearances The Nick Cage year. Drac. Okay. And he... He was good looking. He that was a, did that look was cool. A, that was a fancy looking Dracula. Uh, the next nominee is Ghostface from Scream Six because I think this is the best Ghostface has ever looked. Mm, with all the worn, I think that I the think the masks, masks are aging, and you know what? It's working for him. Oh, a little bit, a little bit of oh. age on the ghost face, a little daddy energy on a little salt and pepper on the ghost yeah, face. It really is salt and pepper. Man. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Silver Fox Ghost Face, man. Uh, and the final nomination goes to Gabby from Infinity Pool. Not because she had she you know one particular outfit that movie was iconic, but she just looked good the whole movie. Yeah, she did. 
I had to give like actual fashion. I had to account for it somewhere. So it all went to me for and like God. real normal <laughs> <Yeah>. human clothes. <laughs> 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 And for best dressed villain in a horror movie, the Crimson Pentacle goes to John Carver from of Thanksgiving. Course. I think, I, honestly, I would be astonished if there is not a second or third Thanksgiving movie. I, I, I think he, I, that movie was good enough. It, he, you know, he can go in with the with the like Silver Age. You know, like you had, when you had the original guys, you had like. Jason and Freddy and and uh, Leatherface and stuff. Then you have like the more modern ones. So you've got like your Sadakos, your uh, Ghost Faces, you know. And then we we did a whole episode on on modern ones, and he slides right on in he there. Does. I think people will be seeing a lot of John Carver. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I hope so. And also, it just works so well because again, it's a Thanksgiving movie. It's like we don't really have a lot of. There, that was like an open it's an open space an open space so he I, I think if we don't see him for the next like two more years if we don't see him every Thanksgiving I'm gonna be upset or at least every <laughs> other yeah right I mean I, these movies can't possibly take that long to make you could do one a year fingers crossed <laughs> Roth get on it <laughs> alright and our uh, final villain category uh, is just for best villain overall uh, overall, who who I thought was the most memorable, the one that stuck with me the most, the one I was most afraid of, you know, there no, there's no restrictions to like creatures or anything. I just thought, what is the best, you mm-hmm. know, the horror movie whose villain scares me the most is, and obviously it has to be a horror movie with like a actual villain. I, I wasn't gonna pick like. I don't know, like, uh, Outwaters, where it's, like, what even is the, like, is is just, like, is the villain just cosmic dread? The villain of Outwater (laughs) is the guy who made it. Yeah. (laughs) So, it had to be something with, like, a concrete villain, you know? Yeah. All right. And so, for best villain overall, the nominations go to the Deadites from Evil Dead Rise. Oh. I find the Deadites to be one, one of the most terrifying villains anytime they show up they're they are like so oppressive and like it's not like a normal demon you know where they're like they play coy for like 90 minutes of the runtime no the deadites just they just keep coming and they don't let up and they do the worst stuff hammering on all cylinders yeah foul mouthed funny yeah ferocious we love it next nominee is megan or mithrigan you know, whatever your preference is. Nope, no one's preference is Mithrigan. <laughs> she showed up. We all knew. We all knew we were going to love her. We did. Right? We saw one TikTok w- with her, and she was a family. Capture the heart of a nation. We loved her. It's it's hard to deny the, the staying power that, that Megan could have. Um, third nominee, uh, an, a duplicate nomination. We have John Carver once again. Ooh. So he was just exactly what you wanted out of that movie man he, he was. did his job he wasn't the flashiest killer per se but he had his moments he was efficient and creative <laughs> yes and we love creative that's what we want <laughs> next nomination goes to asa slash f from weight from suitable flesh okay yeah a little suitable flesh action i i tried to vary up the the nominees from lots of different stuff i wanted we to like get a, that. a nice flavor of the year you know <laughs> a little bit of everything and a moose bouche of 2023 <laughs> <clears throat> um i thought i thought ephraim uh was scary uh i loved his performance you know it, like as done by multiple different people in the movie but that's kind of what made him a fun villain is you got to see him like like six different actors like pretend to be this one character yeah that was really fun and you know he we could see him again in theory you never know with with like magic based villains yeah and it was good to see see barbara crampton flopping around right (laughs) uh next on the list and the final nominee is cw from influencer was this one you saw? Did I did not. Influencer? I didn't get to influencer. All right, so you've been telling me about it all year, though. It's very good. I know you loved Superhost. This is the director's follow up. It's in the same sort of vein. It's still tackling like the same sort of subject matter. And CW, um, the the character is is scary on such a real like 
like down to earth level you know it, it's it's one of those like for the reason people are really scared of the strangers because like oh it could happen it's yeah, so it's, a, yeah it's, it's just a person yeah uh it's it's the same thing you know but uh but it's such a the she is the villain of the movie but she's also the main character because the like final girl of that movie is, is in like the first 20 and the last four like and the rest of the movie is is just the villain having basically won the whole time and she does such a killer performance, and, and it's really good. You you got to get on it. Um, but so for best villain overall, and again, this is just me personally. I think this one is where we're going to start getting a little uh, contentious here. But I gave the award to the Deadites from Evil Dead Rise. It's I look. There's really not much pushback I can give. <laughs> They, you know, they came strong this year. They, 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 they put up a lot of kills. They were very gruesome, very scary. They were eating glass. Yeah, they were just relentless and oppressive. Every time there's an Evil Dead, all the modern Evil Dead movies, even I'd say Evil Dead One, they're not really that scary. But Evil Dead Two, Arm, even Army of Darkness, which is goofy, they're still like they can do anything. You know, like like in. In this one, we got like a whole in like massive like blob person they formed into. They can just do whatever they want. They can, do whatever they can they show want. up wherever they want. They're terrifying, and they always, for some reason, anybody who gets involved in production for an Evil Dead movie, they just make it. It just looks so good. They make it great. Yeah, <laughs> Every, it's always good. I know people have sort of uh, uh, the the Twitter horror sphere has. I've seen a little bit of souring on this movie. Foolishness. People are are less happy. A lot of people are like, "Well, it's just not as good as the 2013 one." And I'm like, "Well, why does it? It doesn't have just because it's not as good. That movie's like almost perfect. Yeah, so that's like, like looking to at to say like it wasn't almost perfect again is like that's kind of a tall order. That's like looking at a sun in a different galaxy and being <laughs> like, "Well, it's all the way over there." <laughs> yeah, it's it's like, like yeah, but it's three times the size of ours. Yeah, I I, I think it's weird. Like this movie was awesome and scary and gru- it's like everything you would want in, especially in an Evil Dead movie to be like it wasn't as good as 2013 just let them do let them keep doing it yeah they'll, you'll probably if you just watch it and rate it good they'll probably make another really good one yeah yeah they'll get more money uh, but yeah I just I, I, I'm i sorry I think it's gonna be a, uh, a judicial bias here if I continue to do these awards anytime there's a Dead Eight movie it's they're probably gonna be pretty high up so I think there's some of the best villains in horror uh as a whole all right so i have one i have oh, one, so slip one in? slip so you gotta slip one in here mm-hmm. uh i i would like to present the the i don't have all the nominees <gasps> i only have the winner okay but i'd like to present the award for best herky jerky walk of the year <laughs> I think uh, horror viewers are no stranger to the Herky Jerky Walk. We have Herky Jerky Walks across multiple genres. We have the zombie Herky Jerky Walk. We have an android Herky Jerky Walk. We have a, a possessed person Herky Jerky Walk. It, they can the Herky Jerky can come in all flavors and shapes and sizes. But I think this year I have to give the best Herky Jerky Walk to Russell Crowe in Pope's Exorcist. <laughs> when he's possessed for that little yes. bit of time. <laughs> that brief moment where he's possessed and he's running through the halls and he kind of looks like he shit his pants oh and he's not God. like trying to get it everywhere. <laughs> the, it's just a herky-jerky walk that stuck with me all year since since seeing it. It's, I, it's I just we such a weird... A Megan. No. Megan's got good dance skills, but the Herky Jerky Walk definitely's got to go to Russell Crowe. Yeah, I'll, it's I'll such give it a to bold you. character decision to go. You know what? Instead of a traditional Herky Jerky Walk, I'll just kind of <laughs> shuffle like I got a turd rolling out of my pants. I saw a uh, an article. I think it was either on like Polygon or IGN recently that that, that commented on. I, I think it might have been a horror movie list because I, I believe they were t- referencing Pope's Exorcist and. They made a comment on how Russell Crowe has been in this, like, he's in this era of acting where he just absolutely refuses to take himself seriously, and it's, like, way better for it. Yeah. Because, like, he keeps doing these roles. Like, he was one of the best things in that um, fourth Thor movie. 
he was just like Zeus. He was just this like shitty, like fat, gross, like Greek, <laughs> super Greek Zeus. It was and he, he had like these short shorts on and he was like, ha lightning boat. And, like he was so goofy in that movie. And then he did this. Like he's just like, whatever, man. I'll just let it out. And he also did that weird like drive angry, like road rage movie where yes. he was just like, just thick like the whale russell crowe just driving <laughs> driving a silver pickup really angrily the whole movie furiously driving yeah <laughs> so he's just been in these like crazy just like whatever man I'll, I'll do whatever goofy character you want and i love it well this year it's it's landed him a uh, crimson pentacle and he's better uh, for the it. crimson pentacle goes to russell crowe and i hope we see more especially more father amorth Russell Crowe, if we can get like a, se- a second Pope's Exorcist or whatever you want to call it, you know. Oh, we could only hope. Yeah, I'm really, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. That'll go in. It might drive me to prayer. My hope. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely, but it might. Don't worry, it'll be a prayer to Satan. We're not. That of course, crazy. of course, we're not, we're not that bad. Uh, all right, so that brings us to our next category, and this is for best. Final girl, a, Ooh, a, a prestigious, award. an extremely prestigious an award, extremely prestigious award, and this was this was a tough category for me to sort my brain for. Yeah, I, I understand. As, as is always, because I mean, what is a, a horror movie without a, a final girl? Now, I I don't have any on this l- list, but I did narrow it down. I wasn't keeping it, you know. I was being I was being modern and inclusive. I wasn't keeping it specifically like gender like gated, you know. Yeah. I was I was keeping it open because it's like sometimes the the final goes really like an, an essence thing. It's not like a, yeah. it, you know, it's not At anything point, that can be that binary. You yes. Know? It's evolved and changed. Yes. It's it's a vibe. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a, a vibe. final girl's a vibe. <laughs> it's not it, it's not one specific thing. Um but that being said, there are only like uh, <laughs> like a fab <laughs> women on this list. But that's not because I wasn't like you know it just didn't fit. Um, but anyway, so be- for best final girl, we- the nominees are Sam Carpenter from Scream Six, of course. God, you got to get her on there, and she came back. She came back to Scream Six with with like hell to pay uh, on all the fucking like trolls and haters online, man. Yeah. So she was like. I'm gonna fucking do it, and man, she literally killed it. There, there was some crazy shit in that movie for Sam. Uh, second nominee goes to Jessica from Thanksgiving. I okay. didn't like her at first, but she grew on me as the movie went on. And you know what? For for a movie that as brutal as that one was, for her to come out like pretty unscathed, yeah, testament to her. You know, surprisingly capable. Yeah. Um, and she like. <laughs> <laughs> managed to carry a love triangle through the whole movie and keep both dudes alive. Yeah. Which is like, Oh my God, wild. I didn't mean to think of that. Yes. <laughs> um, next nominee is Bryn from No One Will Save You. Ooh. Man, she's sprinting and kicking ass throughout that whole movie. A cardio queen. And almost didn't make the cut because uh, I, I required there to be, there had to be a death in the movie in order for someone to qualify as a final person. Yeah. Um, cause otherwise like a lot of like haunting movies end up with like no deaths really. They just like, a lot of scary stuff and someone gets unpossessed at the end, but uh-huh. like you wouldn't, you can't be a final girl in that movie if not, no one died. Um, and I, I wouldn't have counted it except for there are, I believe like two or three people that get like off, like almost off screen. Uh, by the aliens in that movie, if it was like just aliens hunting her the whole time, it wouldn't have counted. But some, a couple people did die, so she's still in there. Uh, the next nominee is Sadie Harper from Boogeyman. Okay, coming hot, coming hot off uh, Yellow Jackets. A lot of nominations for Boogeyman. Boogeyman did some things. But I, I, I have more to say about Boogeyman uh, a little bit later, so we'll we'll catch up to that. But the final nominee. For best final girl uh, is Becky from Wrath of Becky. The titular Becky. Uh, uh, Lulu Wilson doing a great job. I, having fun with it given that like she's like significantly older than yeah. she was in the first movie. 
she's like full on like teenager now <laughs> and so i thought it would be weird but she does it she like i guess based off the events of the first movie she's been like a child like a feral child living on her own <laughs> you know so like I, she does a good job of not acting just like a teenager she's still like really awkward doesn't know how to do like certain things like normally yeah you know but then the other half of her is child rambo so yeah. like <laughs> Uh, Be- Becky uh, is a character that if they keep making movies, I'll keep watching. Uh, it's just it's just fun. It's almost unfair to call Becky a final girl because she is so <laughs> she's, capable. Yeah, yeah. She's practically the slasher of her own movies. <laughs> yeah, like she she it's actually it's actually just a neo Nazi slasher movie. Technically, <laughs> Wrath of Becky is a home invasion movie where Becky's a home invader. <laughs> She gets home invaded first. She just true, re-home true. Invade. She re home invade. You're right. There is right. a there is an extremely John Wick coded scene, like right out of the gate. Yeah, it's like this. It's a, so she just John Wicks them. So you know, it's that they asked for. Oh, it. maybe she is John Wick and not Rambo. She she's like Hit Girl John Wick. Yeah, know? yeah. And I think that's what the third movie is going to be because she gets recruited by the like CIA at the end of this one. So I'll take I think it. The next one really is just going to be like Becky Wick. It's just her. <laughs> just ki- but it's but we, it, we all instead of like generic mobsters, we're just solely killing uh, like white nationalists. <laughs> Which I mean, what, what else do you want? I mean, what else do you like, want? They got it coming. Ki- yeah. Just wa- watching a little blonde girl with a goofy hat just like slaughter Nazis. That's the pro- my one problem with the two movies is they're just the body counts are so low. I think the third one is now open up to be like, let's get Becky like triple digits. Let's see. give her some ammunition. Yeah, I want to see I want to see some mass Becky killing in this third one. But I, you know, digress. It's, it's tough. It's tough. You know, maybe she doesn't quite fit the mold, but I, like it felt it felt wrong to not give her a nomination. True. You know? Yeah. Um, but that being said, the Crimson Pentacle for Best Final Girl, twenty twenty three, goes to Bryn from No One Will Save You. <laughs> uh, it's it's. I felt this one was almost like the easiest to decide because it's she carries the whole movie it's a silent movie she's got help from nobody she's extremely capable with her found resources yeah and she she just kicks some intelligent alien ass. yeah, yeah. And, and and just a hell you know just a hell of a job i it was you know i it was it was close call with sam you know uh watching uh her character from the scream five to six like evolve over the two movies and like at, she always like shows up for her like final big moment and delivers like every time it's so she's so good but um and it's such a shame that we are not gonna we were likely not gonna ever see that character again but you know what we we it's the worst can enjoy timeline. Your, we, yeah this is that we are in the darkest timeline but we've known that for like so long I know. Basically, when they wrote that episode, they put us in the darker time. <laughs> like it's the, it's the it's the writers of Community's fault. <laughs> they shouldn't have thought of it and put it on the paper. She told they told us into the bad in, place. Into a bad place. All right, uh, that brings us to our next category. So these are the final two categories. Okay. So. Let's try and roll through these yeah. guys. We're on so we've got, about 40 minutes. So we've got best performance overall Ooh. in a horror movie. Okay. This is a big one. This is like a real award. This is like a real one. Best performance. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get like one legit one. <laughs> this one's like, you know, the other ones are horror specific. You know, that's for us. But I wanted to get one like what, like they might actually consider it one day, you know, for the uh, the, the tall gold guy award. Or that the tall. Called. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tall gold guy. We don't have to talk about the him on this of the show. Gold idol. Tall gold guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the nominees for best performance in a horror movie in 2023. Uh, the first nominee is Tobin Bell as Jigsaw in Saw X or Saw Ten. Oh. Uh, Caitlin Deaver as Bryn from No One Will Save You. Lulu Wilson as Becky from Wrath of Becky. Okay. <clears throat> Russell Crowe as Father Amorth from The Pope's Exorcist. Had to make the list. (laughs) 
And Alyssa uh, Sutherland as Ellie from Evil Dead Rise. Ooh. This is the mother in Evil Dead Rise. Oh not my the goodness. Aunt. Big drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> and you can sub that out. You can sub that out with real drum roll noise. I think that there. motorboat noise you might like the stay. Motorboat one? Yeah. Okay. Well, so you can put in drum rolls for the other ones and <laughs> just have the one motorboat just that, yeah, yeah. noise. <laughs> and the best performance in a horror movie in 2023 goes to Tobin Bell as Jigsaw in Saw X. Wow. I'm telling you, dude, you, I, I, this is another movie that Eric didn't see, um, which is why I tried to not feature it too heavily. Um, but yeah, dude, you have to watch it. It is, this dude, Tobin Bell is like 82, I think. Good God. And he is still killing it. He's uh, arguably the best at being Jigsaw he's ever been in this movie. And it's like, it was. I couldn't even fit. I was gonna put him, nominate him for best villain overall, mm-hmm. but he's like not even the villain of. It. He's the main character of the movie. Like you, he, you, he does do the saw traps to people, but they're, you like don't want them to win. Like, yeah, like yeah. You want Jigsaw to win this one and to like turn it all around and just like and the the beginning of the movie is like so like slow and contemplative and he's just like. It's like, I'm like this. This is like an Oscar bait opening for a movie. <laughs> like it was crazy how good it is. So I like I I felt like I had to give it to him, especially because again, the dude's killing it still at 82 doing horror movies. Like come on, hell yeah! And he like only, he like fucking almost like drowns in like pig blood in this movie. Like, oh. he's doing some crazy stunt work. It was awesome. He can't be doing that to 82 year olds <laughs> anymore. He he's dude. He's killing it. Crimson Pentacle goes to Tobin Bell. It's, it's like it, ha- it had to be. Caitlin Deaver was a, a real close runner up, it, but she. But I also felt okay because I gave her the best final girl award. So I'm surprised Sophia Wilde didn't make it into there. From Talk to Me. Y- yeah, you know, it, there is. I you know I I don't I didn't like consider her the best performance of that movie. True, makes sense. Not that she wasn't fantastic, but I was like, well, she's not even like the best at, at you know performance in the movie. So like, I'm, I I I bumped her off for stuff. I just really wanted to give Becky some love, you know. So I had I gave her like a little sympathy nomination, you know. That's fine. Just because like she's just so fun, and I want her to. I want people to watch the movie, and I want more Becky talk going on. Hell yeah, let's you know? get that Becky buzz going. All right, and the final category, and this is I guess this is. I saved this for last because it feels like the most important. This is for the best kill. Yes. The best kill of So is this like the award goes to the person who got killed or the killer? What do you think? Who do we get? Because uh, I kind of had the killer lined up. I think I think it should go to both, right? Because both people got to contribute. A dual, a dual award will split the yeah. pentacle in half. Yeah. And it's the like killer when they give both, and killy. then they give uh, best kiss. To two <laughs> I guess people. you're right. right? It's, it's the same two, thing. All right, so yeah, we'll just we'll just have to put in an extra order of the pentacles too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this these are the nominees, and again, these are just my personal ones. And honestly, this was a real toss up. There's so many good ones. Um, this is just my my nominees for best kill in a horror movie 2023 we have uh lily sullivan as beth for dead ites in a wood chipper evil dead rise Oof. not the villain of the movie oh. it was actually the killing of the villain of the quite movie. quite a good kill a little a little heavy on the cgi blood but i can forgive it because they used like 800 gallons of it in the elevator like a scene before so yeah that's fine we can we can it's okay you gotta allocate your wet blood somewhere <clears throat> We have John Carver for Roasted Kathleen in Thanksgiving. Oh, Roasted Kathleen. Uh, the turkey baster, the sprigs of time between the tootsies. I think like... the, the, the time between the toes really <laughs> the puts, little, puts the it little over there. The little turkey leg caps on all of her individual toes after you see her fully cooked is pretty fantastic. <laughs> gratuity to to a to a to a beautiful fine finish and you know what thanksgiving there was a, there was actually a different kill that i two different kills that i had considered first but i feel like if you're if you're doing like a turkey kill you're doing in a thanksgiving, thanksgiving movie, like yeah. that's the that's the one right? hell yeah not my favorite of the movie but it is the most iconic i think so especially because you get to see the handiwork afterwards it's great uh the next award goes to or the next nominee is Tobin Bell as Jigsaw for the do-it-yourself brain surgery. 
full, there's pretty movie, there's pretty movies, self-explanatory. Movies chock full of saw traps, and they're they're at the top of the game in this movie, and I think it's the statement stands for itself. You know what it means. Uh, it, <laughs> it's an awesome, awesome saw trap, uh, and it definitely leads to a kill. So it, you had to go in there. I, I was like, my jaw was. I was like, we're doing that now. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, next on the list, the nominee is Melissa Barrera as Sam Carpenter for killing two thirds of a ghost face. Two thirds of a ghost face is a lot. It's a lot, and I counted um, the uh, the father form of ghost face in this movie. She stabbed thirty four times. I like Damn. sat and I sat there and replayed it and counted all of the stabs. She stabs the shit out of this guy. 34? Yeah, and then the other ghost face, the daughter, she just caps right in the head. Yeah, she, she shoots that bitch right in the face. Yeah. But sta- this dude, she stabs this dude 34 times. It's insane. Damn. And you see every single one of them. It's in, in this cool, like, rotating spiral shot of her, like, stabbing the shit out of him. It was awesome. <laughs> uh, and the final nomination goes to Alexander Skarsgård as James in Infinity Pool for Stop Hitting Yourself. Oh <laughs> God, that movie's just so good. <laughs> we'll have more to say later, but man, Infinity Pool. Yeah, the the Infinity Pool, the scene uh, where Alexander Skarsgård punches his own face into uh, cranberry jelly, basically. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, it's a fantastic scene, uh, and it's the culmination of the movie. And right after that, we get, we get to see him suck on a. A prosthetic prosthetic titty. booby worn by Mia Goth. So, like, why, what more could you want out of like the 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 pinnacle of a of a horror movie? You know, right? It's awesome. It's a high peak. <laughs> <laughs> and for best kill uh, of 2023, I gave the award to Melissa Barrera as Sam Carpenter. For killing two thirds of a ghost face, it's hard. It's hard to deny that she was like a powerhouse performance in both of her movies. We're very sad to see her go, but she literally killed. She killed Ghostface in her first movie. She killed two of them in this movie, and it was in spectacular fashion. I mean, I it and to have the one of the best kills of the year and not even be the killer of your movie. Yeah, it was like to be like the final girl and be, get the best kill. That's what you want, right? She she's like an anti tank weapon in that movie. <laughs> she's just she's just so so powerful on screen. The kills are always fucking over the top. Like you said, thirty four on screen stabs. Oof. In in like a rocking rotating camera shot. It's just like it, it's like being on a roller coaster while she's stabbing the fuck out of uh, Dylan McDermott. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Uh, but yeah, gr- congratulations, Sam Carpenter. Congrats. Enjoy the Crimson Pentacle that has no physical form and you will not receive and you don't know about the show anyway. So maybe we'll tag the winners. Congratulations. We'll tag the winners on Instagram. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and and that's it for my my awards, uh, my category awards for 2023. Next year we'll have it even more organized, and maybe we'll 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 both participate. Maybe we'll get a guest next year who can be surprised by both of our awards. I like that. That would be fun. Maybe we'll expand it. We'll we'll branch it out. Maybe we have any like guests this year that we can bring back. You know? Oh, we'll have some guests. Yeah. We we could we I, if I had planned this whole categories thing out earlier, I, we I would have said like let's get let's get Dylan in here and let's get Lou and we'll get everybody. Oh, and they can introduce. I like that. Would that. Be, how fun would that, that be? That would be fun. All right, but yeah, so that's it. You know, I, I thought that would be a fun way to kind of like talk a little bit about a some movies, a little bit about the some movies, a little movies. bit about a some movies. <laughs> <laughs> A little, the little Mario in me what got the out. Fuck for a was second. that? <laughs> you guys can't see, but fucking overalls just retracted back into his body. I had some desire to eat Let's mushrooms. Let's talk about it some more. Let's talk about. You know what it was? I was thinking. I was thinking of the Pope's Exorcist. Uh, All right. <laughs> 
All right, now let's move on to what you're all here for, what you clicked on the episode for. This is our top movies total overall, our best horror movies of 2023, all categories considered. These are the ones we liked the best for each of us individually, and then we are going to sandwich our list together together into a layered combined list. You can't yeah. see the hand motions. And then by the end of the episode, we will proudly award Best Movie of the Year to Pearl. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Every year. No, so... Four last... more years. Four <laughs> more years. <laughs> let's let's do a quick recap of what our, our top five for our combined list was at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, you know, you said Pearl was our number one. It was almost the easiest thing to figure out in our combined list. It was the easiest. We we pretty much agreed before the show even started that Pearl was our best. Like, we, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's on top of our Christmas tree right now. She was a shoe in to win. Uh, who is who is number two? Number two from last year was X. So X. Another one. Another one that was really easy <laughs> to decide. <laughs> uh, guess what's going to probably be our, our top movie of 2024? I can it's almost, gonna be, it's gonna I can almost promise you. Uh, number three was Scream 5. We both enjoyed that considerably. Yes. I haven't done a rewatch. Oh, though. really? It's quite good. So, still uh, great. I, I, you know, I believe that it would still be great, but I have not kind of, like, after it's all sank in, especially after seeing 6, haven't done a rewatch of it. Uh, number four, Barbarian. Have done a rewatch of this recently. So good. Holds up. Amazing. Totally. I, I, w- I would not remove it for a second. And number five, Orphan, First Kill. That movie was so fun, dude. It was a blast. <laughs> it was one of the one of the old, like few good things to come from that streaming service. Was it Paramount? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if we we wouldn't have gotten it if Paramount wasn't like scrambling for licenses to like make content for. Hey man, I'm glad it happened. <clears throat> was a, it like there's been thirteen a good, years later or some shit? Yeah, there's been a couple good like content scramble like streaming war entries like prey i think was like also because like disney was like Fuck, well we bought predator put predator out we got to put stuff on hulu no one takes it seriously <laughs> <laughs> so we got you know we, we got some good stuff out of, out of this like uh this frenzy 20, so, 2022 also was like a, a a horror movie year that i don't think i've ever had before that oh, yeah. it was just so it was fucking intense, dude. thickly chock full of heaters and you know what i thought I, because I was remembering last year being so like full of crazy shit, I thought this this list was going to be less fun to make because I was like, oh well, this wasn't there wasn't as many good stuff this year. But then I like started to like put the list together, and I was like, fuck, so much good shit. Yeah, came out. it's actually an awesome year. It, like, you go into panic mode. Yeah, I, I would say almost as good as last year. There was still like there yeah. was so many good things. <laughs> so I, I I don't know where this like where along. 2023 i decided like nothing good came out but i was like fooling my I had, like an aneurysm or something <laughs> like just like all, it's all the look, good stuff left. it was a super long year it was a long year dude. it was a very long year and uh you know you forget some things that happened along the way but then you go back and you go oh that was this year it was amazing yeah i'm honestly i'm pretty thrilled with this year i thought we had some really fantastic movies come out and good year for horror in general. I think next year we're gonna try to we're gonna try to include more video games and books. Absolutely, because it's my goal to read more current like horror content, um, just to keep it relevant for you guys. You know, because yeah. sure there's plenty of people who listen who like to read that, that might want to get into like reading more horror books. But it's like kind of hard to know where to start. In, yeah, unless like everyone just goes, we'll just read Stephen King. But there's like so much other good stuff. There's so much like better to stuff know. too, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, but for this we'll year, we're gonna keep yeah. it pretty pretty tight. We're gonna do movies again, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I think we should we should start. Yeah. Do you want to start with our bottom of the list and go up? Do you want to alternate, or do you want to do your list and then my list? Let's just do. We're gonna. We're not gonna dwell too mm-hmm. much on them. We'll just do our our my five, your five. Yes. All right. Well, and you we'll start because I just did a whole fucking. Okay. So coming in at number five for me is the uh, the conference directed oh. by Patrick Elkwood. 
This is a, I believe, Swedish movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is a camp slasher that takes place during a, uh, like, almost a team-building retreat by this land development team, uh, which very quickly devolves into one of the best slashers most of you haven't seen. (laughs) I haven't seen it. I it, it was on my list mostly because it was on your list, and mm-hmm. I assumed at some point we would watch it together. But then, like, shit got so busy. Well, and we you went were on, out, oh, with, you out went, of state for you went and yeah. got married one week, and then we're on a honeymoon, and then y- yeah, you were gone for like a month. Yeah. I had to do something. Yeah, so but I watched the conference. That's my number five. Super iconic looking slasher. Really great over the top kills hilarious sense of humor uh and just just a unrelenting uh sense of uh potential violence (laughs) yeah i i do want to check that one out that one's on my list of because i'm slowly compiling a list of 2023 shit i gotta catch up on but yeah that's my number five the conference all right all right so i have where did I put my... It's right next to you. Oh. All right. So, number five for me, and this was tough. I, honestly, th- this list could really change, like, just at any moment, based on how I'm, like, my mood is changing. Because, this again, this, movie, this year was, like, filled with so much good stuff that once I put it all down, I was like, fuck, I thought I had an easy five. No. And it just kept morphing. Yeah. Um, but number five for me is going to be Saw X. So again, so we have two movies in our top five. One I haven't seen, one you haven't seen. I really, I know you're like a little lukewarm on Saw. Like you're like, whatever about it. Yeah. You know, I, I think most of them are pretty missable. I, I like them, but I by no means would like ask somebody to watch 10 or nine movies that like only the first three of are decent, you know, but like. I don't know what happened between the last Saw installment and this one, but it's so it's so good. It really the performance. It's like a, it's a much quieter movie, and, and like you you like every single character like plays a role really well, and you just really feel for again. That's why I gave Tobin Bell best performance. It was like it was like watching like you, like Walter White, you know that kind, it was like watching this like like just this one this one actor just carry the whole thing so like strongly <laughs> i'm super into checking it out it's not something that i plan on putting off much longer yeah but i, I i'm interested sp- specifically to see how it's edited because all the saw movies have like a very specific like pacing and like style to them completely different i'm hoping <clears throat> it feels it feels <laughs> so different and the crazy thing too is it well the it, this I guess doesn't have to do with like the cinematography side mm-hmm. of it, but it was written by the same guy who did Spiral. And I watched Spiral. I didn't hate it as much as a lot of people hate it. I know you definitely. Didn't I like despised it. it. Um, but it's crazy that I like. I can see why people don't like it. So it's crazy to know that like the same writer did that, and then just I don't know if it was like his. He was influenced by like knowledge that people didn't like it, and he was like, "Well, fuck it, I'm doing something totally different." But it feels. Like, the voice of the movie is so totally not what Spiral was about. Um, he was also the writer for Piranha 3D, which is, like, a bad but good movie. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't yeah. have expected that. But, yeah, Saw, it just, it's it's classic Saw. It's got crazy kills, but not unrealistic ones like some of the later Saw movies have. Where yeah. you're like, all right, now we're getting a yeah, bit, yeah. We're getting a bit, like... Rube Goldberg in here. Like this, it used to just be like sit in this bathroom or cut your off pinky your off. Yeah, like it used to be very simple. Like you can sit in this gross bathroom and die, or you saw your leg off and go. Like that was kind of the choices. Or it was... I put the key in your wiener. Cut off your wiener and put it in the box. <laughs> put it in the acid, and then the acid will dissolve your wiener. Then you'll be able to get the key. <laughs> but before that, you have to crawl. <laughs> it's like it, it becomes like this insane. <laughs> Like, it's like fucking Acme designed it and Wile E. Coyote built it. Like, the, the, the final, like, Saw movies are crazy, dude. Put your wiener in the acid and dissolve it to unveil the key. <laughs> but the, the kills in this movie, 
doing your own brain surgery aside, you know, which is pretty insane, but it doesn't feel crazy in the moment, you know, but the rest of the kills, they're all pretty down to earth. They're like more traditional jigsaw stuff. And it's just, they bring back a a bunch of old characters, you know, because, because like the last Saw movie, they like made a new, new, like protege of jigsaw that nobody gives a fuck about. And like, it, it was just like, why did we even watch this? I think jigsaw was the one that was like, yeah, Ugh. not good. But he, it's just like back to form. So I, I'd say that like this and Saw One are the best ones. Okay, okay. Like so just watch your... one and ten, and you you could just leave it. I think. <laughs> um. But yeah. What do you have for number four? My number four is a uh, uh, you know an obvious standout amongst standouts this year. Uh, I, I did, we're, we didn't do a whole episode on it, and honestly, I think in the, sometime in the future we might, but uh, No One Will Save You is my number four. Mm-hmm. I think it, it's it's really no question. It, it, it's just a killer fucking alien movie. It, it's creepy. It's got cool, like, weird, unexplained alien technology. The whole, you know twist or not twist the whole like part of the movie where like there's just no dialogue and it's all like emotive acting and body language and reacting to the aliens it's just a knock out of the fucking park yeah i was so completely like floored by this movie by how good it was with no fanfare about it coming out it was just like hulu's putting out it's it's an alien movie yeah nothing yeah it's crazy that there wouldn't have been somebody along the line there that like knew this movie was in production and like knew about it and like how could you know it and not like know oh this movie's awesome more people need to see it we got to put some marketing into this I'm bummed out I didn't get to see this movie in theaters the the this movie honestly deserved like a theatrical release like I probably so. nothing else this year I I think so especially because this movie is extremely CGI reliant all, there's no, as far as I know, the aliens, there's no practical stuff going on. There's no costumes. It's all CGI creatures. And n- you know how we feel about that. It can be, it can really ruin a movie. Yeah. But it's, om- it's, it is like pretty close to like flawless in, in my opinion for like what I wanted out of it. I never yeah. like saw any of these aliens and thought, ugh, that looked bad. Or like, oh, I wish they did like a No, a nothing about a they look so good. Yeah, nothing about it is lacking. The visually. mocap is like killer. The, the designs are awesome. There's like different flavors of aliens. That uh, fun little stance where they go like. Bloo, yeah, bloo. we do that. It's it's become like an actual household thing. Like if you go watch this movie because the aliens do this weird thing where when they like want to like signal something or communicate with one of the other aliens, they do these like because they have these long weird limbs and they like crouch down and get in these like wacky poses. And we've just adopted doing it in the house for like, like <laughs> someone will round a corner and one of us will just be like all hunched down like this creepy alien. <laughs> so like to have like fundamentally affected a household, like it's a pretty powerful movie, man. Yeah, but that's my number four. I, you know what? I, uh, no one will save you is not on my list, but I was kind of hoping that this would happen, that our lists would be different because you're probably going to have movies that I really wanted to include, but I only had five spaces. <laughs> I figured we would get a little bit of vice versa on that. I know. So I'm, I'm glad it's not like totally universal. Like I think last year we had more overlap this year. Not so much. Um, for me, I put evil dead rise at number four. I, it was, I needed to get the movie on that list. I, I can't say like, I know some people weren't thrilled about it. You know, I'm Fuck not going to say it was a perfect movie. I thought it was, it was what I, Everything I could want out of an Evil Dead movie, just so much fun, so scary, just o- overwhelming and, and like oppressive, but like fun and goofy. Yeah, it has all, like Evil Dead movies. All of them have all of that all the time. I I just loved it, and I hope that we keep getting Evil Dead entries that are this like quality. You know? Yeah, I yeah. if if we can get because we you know we had the remake in twenty thirteen. You know, we had the TV show, which I haven't finished still, which is a tragedy, um, but I plan to. Uh, and then we have this one. I I really just want a movie with this, like the either the remake or the, or Evil Dead Rises quality. I want an Army of Darkness 
of it. Like I want, Ooh. I want like even if it was like Beth from this movie, her or like or if we bring back um, I would, Mia from the 13, 2013 one. I would love to see them team up. If That'd we be awesome. if we can send them back to medieval times <laughs> and have them fight a skeleton army and shit, but like with the sort with, with the approach that the modern ones have, like if I could get a fantasy horror like evil dead movie like army of darkness style now i i like i would cry you know i i and and i think evil dead rise was like the perfect step we needed to keep going towards that and it made a fuckload of money i mean bruce campbell himself came out and he's like a almost executive producer on these right Mm -hmm. He, he said himself he's like hey like we're you should expect like an evil dead like every two years for a little Mm -hmm. while which is great i loved it I, I love that confidence. I it was uh, honestly it, it was a struggle to to not give it movie of the year. Yeah. And it's number 4. The only That's reason, what's crazy about this year. <laughs> just just like uh no one will save you. I left it off my list because I knew confidently I'm like Matt's going to hit this one. It's it, I mean we like, did an episode on it like we talked about it for almost 2 hours. Yeah. It's, if it's, there if there's a series if there's like a series that you can guarantee I'll be all over. If it's not Chucky, it's going to be Evil Dead, I think. <laughs> um so give me your All right, that's 4. So give me number 3. What's number 3. Slide? Again, I think in a year of less powerful entries, this could have easily taken the number one spot in in many other years. But I'm going to give my number three to talk to me. Wow. Number three. There was a lot of buzz when that movie was, you know, making the rounds that everybody said, this is the movie year, this is the movie of the year. And I, I, I doubted it initially. I was like, well, I don't know if it's the movie of the year. But the more that movie sticks with you and the after, you know, watching it, I think I've seen it three times now. Mm-hmm. That movie just fucking bringing it. It rips, dude. Rips. It, it's tough. It's tough to deny this one. The, the, the music, the the just the whole gang at everyone's performance is fucking great. Yeah. It, the effects, the are, effects all good. are amazing. There's like not a a cheesy frame in this movie everything looks on point it's it's scary it's brutal yeah brutal it really like cuts deep man it's it's a good movie (laughs) your number three my number three is a a recent watch actually we watched it this past weekend with the with the this twitch stream group Um, this is infinity pool i had to give i had to get this one in like i needed to rewatch this I had already seen it twice. I just needed to make sure it was as good as I remember. And man, it just, it, it like every time you watch it, it's like watching it the first time because you see something weird yep. that you didn't see. And you just get, you get to relive these performances that are so wild that they feel fresh every time you see it because you're like, I can't believe how was the set of this movie? How wacky must everybody just be like feeling all the time. She jerked him off while he was taking a piss. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> what kind of demon hands does that woman have? It's crazy. It's so good. Mia Goth is absolutely unhinged in this movie. She, it's like somebody just when they, when she was like going to school and she was putting all of her like skill points into different acting stuff. She she just like put it put all of her points in like intense and loud. You know, <laughs> and they just shipped her that way. She's like, I'm going all they just in. Shipped her like she's that. Like, I'm gonna, like, no notes. She she was like, I'm going glass cannon performance. All right, <laughs> I, I get one big shot, and and you're all gonna love it. And it's crazy. She's so good. And Alexander Skarsgård, I think, it, I, I know people like have like they you know he's like the hot guy from True Blood. Yeah, but like he's. He's like a fantastic actor. Yeah, he's so good. And I feel like people don't talk about that. He gets enough. wasted in these like in romantic roles and like more serious stuff. He needs to be in more freak shit like this. Yeah, yeah. He's he is a tremendous actor. He's so good. And I just feel like he does like he's just like oh that guy from True Blood. I'm like well okay yes, but like he was just essentially a mannequin in that show <laughs> like, with an accent. <laughs> like that was his whole thing was like foreign hot vampire. But he like he's so good. Did you ever watch um the what's the the one where he's beaten Nicole Kidman? No idea. 
the the TV show. Which one is that? Sharp Ob- No. No, not Sharp Objects. It's Objects. one with with Shailene Woodley. Big Little Lies. Don't know. So good. He's crazy in that. He's like this like really evil, abusive husband, but like you, he's like so good at that evil actual real life phenomenon where you like you just like oh well and maybe he beats her but like yeah i like him so you know? <laughs> oh god it's like he's that's how good of an actor he is he like he's able to convince you that like, you still he makes you like consider him. domestic abuse yeah that you, Jesus you, you Christ. still want to like him he's so good and <laughs> jamesy jamesy you, he's at his most schlubby and he's i'd still fuck he him. is at 300 <laughs> percent schlub in infinity pool yeah and i'd still do it <laughs> like yeah, that's how awesome he is i'm gonna flip it right back to you because number two for me is infinity pool oh okay, i watched okay. that movie i think more than any other movie this year mm-hmm. i i just i saw it in theaters fell in love with it i watched it at home fell in love with it again watched it probably three times for just the episode we recorded and then watched it two other times by myself I just fucking loved that movie. That movie put a hook in me this year that I I have not been able to take out. It's it's just so fun. I can't blame you. I, I again, I this this whole list is chaos to me. I wanted all of them to get number 1. They can't all be number 1. So fun. It's yeah, but yeah, I, I I can't I can't. And in fact, this next movie is your number 2. So what this is This one it? is my number 2 and this one goes to Boogeyman. Wow, Boogeyman high up on Boogeyman the list. Boogeyman high up, and and here's the thing, I I I love this movie I, again, just like almost every movie on this list, I, or every movie on this list. It, the performances are tremendous. They it won the award for best kid actor because that kid actor was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But also, Sophie Thatcher is such a good actress too. Yes, it, it, she's just phenomenal i can't wait to see like what kind of roles she ends up doing as she gets older you know i i hope that she doesn't like disappear mm-hmm. you know yeah in, into the eighth or like a lot of you know teen you know younger actors do especially when like they are like caught up in like a super successful show yeah right because sometimes that can just like it blows up and then like, and then they're just and then stuck the child there. actor is like ruined and they're not they yeah. don't act in anything ever no. again you know she sophie thatcher's so good in this Every actor is good. The story is tight. I mean, it's it's Stephen King, right? So it's got that going for it. Yeah. But it is a extremely successful Stephen King adaptation. And what really pushed it up to number two for me was because so we have a mutual friend, me and Eric. His name is also Eric. A third. A third. Well, a second Eric. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't count. He is. <laughs> He's he'll watch horror movies with us because he wants to hang out, right? But he yeah. he's his he's not like a huge horror guy. He just happens to know and have seen a lot because of me and yes. you. We just subjected him yeah. to our our fixation. So so when a horror movie like actually grips him and he like enjoys it. So this, you know, he's he's what I would say like, you know, a non-horror person. A casual. Yeah, a casual even. It, like he was <laughs> gripped by this movie like he watched it and he like a day later was like hey i was thinking about that movie he was like that was such an effective horror movie and i'm like for like a layman to come out and like give that kind of test that's like a natural i didn't coach him no you know yeah. but, like that was a natural response to this movie it's and, and that's what it is it's an effective horror movie it the actors are convincing yep they're likable yep you you like are invested in in not just like the the scary stuff but their lives and and the it has a fantastic creature design and the cinematography is awesome it the was, sound is is i don't know if you know the this. light work is crazy i don't know if you know this but the the monster was actually nominated for a uh crimson oh, pentacle oh my god oh on my the god. on the the devil's cut uh, yes they it was nominated it was nominated <laughs> Holy shit. This is why we need other people to read it so that we can lie and say we didn't know who was nominated. <laughs> uh, no, it just... It, the, the movie <laughs> it is just... It is a solid horror movie. A really fun time. It, it's like... it's a. It doesn't ever get boring. It's just... You, you just strap in and it's like a fun ride to go through the whole time. It's got a, a lot of good scares and they get a cool creature reveal at the end and you care about all the characters it, it's just like and for it to to be able to just like affect like a 
a a normie you know that mm-hmm. deeply they they're like thinking about it the next day it's just so good and, i mean and, that's that's the goal of every one yeah, right and, every horror movie and i'd say you know it's it, it it gets bonus points for being like now you have now this is another movie that you can be like if you're trying to convince somebody to like get into horror it's you the on ramp it's yeah it's it's just it's scary but it's not like overwhelmingly scary or like it's not like evil dead where it's like if you bring a normal person Who's like I'm not really that into scary movies, and I don't really like gore. Show them like an Evil Dead movie, and they're gonna break up with you. <laughs> Even if you're not dating, they'll be like, "No." They're like, "No, we're done. You're not my cousin anymore." Socially, <laughs> I'm cut. I'm cutting this limb off the family tree. You know, it's a good entry movie too, and for like it to be good entry level horror, but still good for like horror veterans. Yeah, it's like it's. It's I th- I thought it did a really good job of hitting like so many different angles. So oh, it had to go all the in. angles. Yeah, <laughs> it had to go in there for me. <laughs> You're gross. Give me your number one. <laughs> no, this is it. We're on number one. We're right? on number one. Yeah, this, this is my number one. So what so is your I, what is Eric's number one? I think it is no surprise to anyone who's been listening throughout the Uh-oh. year. Uh, I think this is probably going to be our our most contentious. Oh no, I'm leaving. Friction. I'm I, leaving the room. I, I gotta give number one to Skinner Marink. No! I gotta. No! It permanently altered my brain chemistry. No! I I I forced someone else to go see it oh. with me a second time. Not the rink. It 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 the rink. Just touched me. the 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 deepest part of my soul oh, and corrupted God. it. I I love that movie. I will be championing that movie for as long as I live. I'll, I'll, and I understand the I pushback. I, I understand why it didn't work for some people. But it just it 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 fucked me up real oh, good for a I, long time. To this day, still see tweets talking about how it, that movie was so good and it changed me, man. And it just it it if ever feels like everybody's lying to themselves. It's crazy. Uh, I can't believe it. I thought I was, I, you know, as as five, four, three, two, like came down. I was like, oh, am I? free of skin and marink it's nope. not in his list nope. i was so excited saved it for number one i had to i had to because i was making this list and i was like man i really want to put infinity pool with number one i want to put this movie i want to put that movie movies that i ended up taking off the list entirely because i i was scrolling through and i realized like man i can't skin marinks this year i gotta nah. get it to skin and marink i can't handle it oh and it's so high up it's i'm glad it's... we're i'm glad we're gonna duke this out and it's not you made the dog burp. The dog just burped. Yeah. You made her nauseous with the suggestion that Skin and Marink <laughs> is number one. I'm glad this isn't like an aggregate thing and we get to duke it out because yes. I, I need Skin and Marink off or low. Uh, I, <laughs> I, don't know I, 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 here's the thing. I, I, I had to put it number one on mine because I just, it, because I just offset my hatred. Just, for it. just to be true to myself, uh-huh. I knew that it wasn't going to end up our combined number one. But I needed to be honest with the man I am and say, Skin and Rink gave me the this the spookies. <sighs> so let's hear your number I'll respect, one. I'll respect you as a friend. <laughs> But that's the, it's as far as we can go. I can't. It, I'm, <laughs> you're on the skin of your teeth here with that suggestion. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I know you really like Skin and Ring. I didn't like it, but I'm glad. Hey, I'm glad people get something out of it. Variety claims it's the number one scary movie of the year. Ooh, I don't know I'm what weight we they carry, Variety. but I did see somewhere that Variety was like Skin and Ring is it. This is why we go to websites like Bloody Disgusting and not Variety for our horror movie opinions. Mm-hmm. Although Bloody Disgusting probably liked it too, those assholes. They they <laughs> didn't enjoy it. <laughs> give me that give me that writer. I need to make an email. <laughs> uh all right. So but I, no, I re- I'm glad that some people got something out of it. Be I'd hate to have everybody who watched it have a miserable time. At least yeah. At least like two or three people liked it. I'd say two or three thirds. <laughs> two or three people liked it. <laughs> um <laughs> All right, so for me, my number one, my, what I thought was the best, most successful horror movie of the year, my number one is Talk to Me. I wanted to keep it light for your. I was surprised that Talk to Me was not your number one, or at least number two. 
Um, <sighs> yeah. Just because of how you were reacting to it before going into me watching it. And, you know, we did a whole episode about it, so I know how you feel. I, I thought it would be maybe a tight race, but I thought it would end up being your number one. I, I had to put a lot of thought into it, and honestly, there's just the, – the, the charm and the charisma of Infinity Pool push, pushed it <laughs> down into the third place. And then just the the pure primal fucked up thing that Skinnamarink did to my subconscious. Your lizard brain really fucked you up, huh? it, Yeah. 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 So I, I actually – I don't think – I don't – Talk to Me is one of my favorite movies of the year. I don't know if it is definitively my favorite, but I do think it was the best one of the year. I would 100% watch it a billion more times. That's how good yeah. it was. I, I think maybe like an Evil Dead Rise or or an Infinity Pool, you know, I'm more likely to put on again. Yeah. Because, But that doesn't mean it's bad because like I'm not going to casually watch Hereditary either. When I yes. watch like Hereditary or Midsummer. I love those movies, and I will watch them, like, without question, but I do need, like, to pre- prepare myself mentally. I need to put put a space around me yeah. to watch those kinds of movies, and that's what Talk To Me is. Like, if I'm going to watch it, I, which I would love to do again, you know, it, I have to, like, be ready to watch Talk To Me. I can't just, like, slap it on. Like, I'll just slap on Scream 6 whenever, right? Yeah. But, like... It's more of a romp. Yeah, but, like, that way. I, I need to, like... It needs. It's an event to watch. Yes. Talk to me. So it becomes. It, for me, it's fallen into the the Ari Aster, you know, zone where Ooh, a prestigious. Yeah, where like I I love the movie, but it's so impactful that I ha- I have to put I have to get a brain space going you ha- to, you, to support it to give know? it the reverence it deserves. It does. Yeah, that's exa- That's pretty much it, man. Like, yeah, it, it's it, there's sort of a ritual that goes on when I want to watch hereditary or or something and and it's usually it's usually like also like something i like i have i want to show people like yes. hereditary and midsummer it's like one of those things where it's like oh those came out like so other people have to see this this yes. can't like this needs to be an experience someone has talk to me is the exact same way i feel like people need to see it yes because it's like it's not just a horror movie it's it's like it's so like so much more and it's like it like really like stuck with me like i still think about it like it it it, it dug its claws in real deep and, and like for a movie to do that how do you not could how do you not give that like yeah extra you know how do you not give that the award the, the number one yeah i guess that's that was it for me only because like it, it was just it did something different it, like like skin and did for you yeah talk to me did for me because it had an actual story, so I felt like I was something for me to be affected by. <laughs> All right. Well, then, if you if you're saying "Talk to Me" is your number one, the the real debate that we have to have is True. whether or not Infinity Pool and "Talk to Me." That's that's our that's our number one spot. So, do we want to start at our number one and work backwards like last year? Um. Yeah, I think we so. So yeah, basically the number one slot is is up for grabs for for Talk to Me or Infinity Pool. Mostly because like we both agree, like we love Infinity Pool. We both watched it a million times. Yes. Um, it was my number three. It was your number two. Um, Talk to Me was further down on your list. Um, Infinity Pool was number two. I will n- not allow Skin or Rank to win. So this is what understandable. We're at. So it's, talk, it's Talk to Me and Infinity Pool. I think <laughs> I would relent to your Talk to Me number one. Only because I know, like, Infinity Pool is t- number two on my list because of how much I watched it. I, I just really liked it. I know that there is a quality to both of them that <clears throat> separates them a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, it is it is a Cronenberg movie, Infinity Pool, um, or Son of Cronenberg. But, it you know, it, it, it yeah, it definitely has a vibe, it has a feel to it that... It has less mass appeal, and that doesn't mean it shouldn't be number one. But I mean, like it talked to me. 
as much as I would like to give it to Infinity Pool, for me, I, I think I'd still have to vote for Talk To Me. I think I gotta give it Talk To Me only just for the underdog of it. You know what I mean? Like That too. It's it's like, you know, people who are it's an new, indie Australian film, yeah, came new to, out of nowhere. New to, like, you know, premiere directing, new to, you know, acting. Was it like A24 everyone's... or Neon? Uh, or neither? <laughs> I believe... A24? Yeah, yeah, yes. it was eight yeah, two four, eight two four, yeah. two four for sure. Because that's why we were able to <laughs> review it. Because oh right, we, well, it, was, it, was, it was Australia. Yeah, it was the one. It of was the four movies we could talk yeah. about. So number one, that's our number one. All right, we agree. Talk to me. <laughs> Pink <laughs> number one, stealing the crown from right off of Pearl's head is the mannequin hand from Talk to Me. <laughs> <laughs> And then I think... Wearing it like a bracelet. Look at him go. <laughs> <laughs> I think number two, we could say Infinity Pool. No? Yeah. Do you have any other... Yeah, so now that we're kind of all of the nominees are sort of like in a, in a free fall here, I, I would, based on how high up it was for you, and having seen it again very recently and, and knowing that you watched it so much, I, I, I would say let's give Infinity Pool 2... It, it's a little, it's a little too niche for overall. Oh, it's a big time weirdo film. Yeah, big time but, weird shit going on. But I on. will give it number two happily. Remember the long nipple? Oh, the long leaky nipple. Ugh. It was leaking too. Come on, like we ain't all seen a leaky nipple at some point. <laughs> She's making a face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then number three. Yeah. All right. So this is where we happy, start. Ha- totally happy with with. Infinity Pool too. I, I I I think it deserves it. How high was um, No One Will Save You? Did you get that one on your list? You did it not. didn't quite make the top five. It was really tough. Okay, I'd say honestly, it's not on my list because I specifically knew you were going to put it on yours. I would very confidently put Evil Dead in number three. You would you would do Evil Dead for me? You I put it I three? would because Evil Dead was like we said that. Dude, that movie was like a fucking flamethrower of a movie. It was so good, so intense, great humor, awesome special effects. Yeah, it, it's it's tough to to argue. I, I it's so fun. An unorthodox amount of zombie mom toes. Yeah, uh, uh, and yeah, killer performances. I mean, they always get such good deadite performances out of people yes. no matter who's working on the evil dead movies i'm just glad everyone takes it so seriously yeah but, and also has a fun time yeah too. it's great okay awesome so evil dead at number three yes oh, so good so good i like this list so far number four all right so my number four was evil dead okay what was your five five was saw okay boogeyman was number two and we haven't even oh uh, okay well as much as I did like Boogeyman, I I I think Boogeyman up against No One Will Save You is the the conversation to have, mm-hmm. and I will let you start it. Well, I've already talked at length about Boogeyman, so I do you I, think Boogeyman can nudge out the other one? I mean, obviously you do because you, you structure oh, your yeah, list it, as yeah, such. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, but but again, I, here's the thing: as I've said this whole time, my list was very fluid up until you forced me to put numbers in front of things right 15. before we started recording. So, what I will I, I will seed the slot. Uh, uh, I will seed Boogeyman's slot for No One Will Save You because No One Will Save You was on my short list for top five. Okay. Uh, it also, if you didn't know, um, won uh, Best Final Girl Crimson Pentacle Award. At the, oh my god! It did. It did. Just at, like, at the Devil's just Cut, like in, just like forty minutes ago. It was at crazy. the Devil's Cut Podcast yeah, Awards. Exactly. Wow! It was awesome. You should have seen it. That's you should have been there. Let's go for them. Yeah. So I, I, I'll give, I'll give a, as good as I think Boogeyman is. Um, it, it is a little safe at times, and I think no one will save you. Like took so many risks and and just like swung for the fences and just nailed it out of the park like every time very little uh nitpicks do i have with that movie yes. so 
So I'll, I'll I'll let it slide. If it's if it was on your list, you want it to go ahead. You already gave me. I look, you're being very um, stoic about about I, my onslaught against. Uh, I understand. I understand the the niche <laughs> appeal of Skin and Marink, but. I, I and I like I said I'm comfortable not giving it number one. I might fight you for number five. I just don't want to ra- I, I, because I don't want to railroad the list. You know I mm-hmm. want it to be democratic. Uh, because you you gave up so easily on skin and rank, and you've been very cordial about the rest. Uh, I'll I'll let evil you, you bump off boogeyman. Put in put in your guy. All right. So then we got right up top number one. Talk to me. Number two, Infinity Pool. Number three, Evil Dead. Number four, No One Will Save You. And now the the coveted the, number five spot. The coveted worst of the best goes to <laughs> who does it go to? Uh well here here's where we here's where we you know, I, I will I will say Skin Marine, because I think just on the 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 mass effect it had on people he's making a face that i can't even decipher (laughs) i I think that has to be in number five it was one of the highest grossing movies of the entire year it's yeah it's painful it's me swallowing the 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 it's pride pill that i have (laughs) to take to to allow this i will allow it to be on the list it can be number five. If you have anything that you think can can fight me for Skin Marink at number five, I think literally here's your moment. That, I think anything that got a nomination for a Crimson Pentacle would be a better movie to put above it. Really, but because I have it is so it, it's right down in the dirt with Outwaters <laughs> in terms of things that I hated more. than I will anything give it to you. Year. Outwaters was trash. I'll, at least Skin and Marink had like some style to it. Yes, but the, it, not enough. But it did have something. So I guess it's like <gasps> was it's that like, a Skin and Marink compliment? I heard it's a it's like yeah, it's slightly less in the trash than Outwaters. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I I think any movie we've talked about up until now could beat it. But I'll let it ha- I'll let it be number five. If only because of how like influential and divisive it was, I think. If you got people talking about it, I guess it can't be. You know, I, I tell you what, it put fucking butts in seats, man. It did, dude. It, it made money. It, it brought people so out. Me. <laughs> it brought people out. Yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with it. I can live with that. This list is like a fucking powerhouse list, anyway. Yeah. Even with Skin and Marink on yeah. it, <laughs> it's still kills dude talk to me infinity pool uh what was three evil dead evil dead and then no one will save no you no one will save you and now Scaring. we have covered most of these all but one of these movies in full detail so if you're just hopping on the train now definitely go back and check out some of those episodes for sure there and uh, honestly all of them are really good episodes too the talk to me one is is very fun I, I think we had like a killer time for for the Evil Dead Rise one. I think I need to listen to the Talk to Me one again because it feels like a it feels forever ago. A fever but it dream. Was, yeah, it was it really like a couple weeks ago. ago. It was only in <laughs> October, I think. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man, what a good year it was! It was a long year. It was a tough year. But overall, uh, horror, as always, helped get us through. It's just a beautiful genre, man. It was coming out the fucking hose at 100 miles an hour this year it really was. in a way that I didn't expect. I thought I mean, the second half of this year was going to be very light. Even considering we did a, you know, like, end of the year, hey, go check out these movies in October, to yeah. November, December, it still felt kind of light. But after looking at the entire year, front to back, tip to I mean, tail you know it's a crazy year when i think i think it came out on the 6th of january when your year opens with megan yeah like a what <laughs> we we should have known we were in for one yeah you know it, it was it was such a good time so many good movies great year to just be doing the podcast like it's yeah so, like we've we've been blessed with like we started the podcast just in time for like two of the biggest years of like horror like ever 
Yeah. Uh, and it feels like it's only going to keep going. Like, I, I can't wait to, to see all the, the shit that's coming out this year. We've got, like, what, a new Omen? Yes. we got Maxine Omen prequel, coming out. Maxine, we're getting um, a bunch of sequels. There's yeah, going to be a for the bunch of new entries in like old IP. Uh, I think I think this would be a good time to uh, start throwing out some predictions as to what's coming ahead in 2024. Yes, I don't have like too many solid. I think by ne- our next episode, I'll have a couple more. I, my one of my predictions is I'm going to predict that the Omen movie will be the opposite of exorcist believer oh. i'm i'm guessing that this is going to like kickstart like a huge horror revolution where everyone suddenly has damien as their like favorite i think we're gonna get a sequel featuring a new damien everyone's gonna love him maybe it'll be timothy chalamet wow <laughs> You think he'll have time? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Imagine if we did like D- Damien, but like adult Timothy Chalamet Damien. Come on, when he's the that president, would, that would be butts in seats. When he's running for kid, the presidency, kid demon president Timothy Chalamet. You know I'd Timothy Chalamet is like oh, like uh, in his twenties, right? You know yeah. he's not a kid. Well, I know, but now, but I I jumped forward. I was I was thinking we were gonna cast young for new Damien, but I'm thinking if, like again, if you want butts in seats, I think you say no. Adult Damien. Everyone knows Damien. We know he's the kid of the devil. What's he doing in his 20s? Timothy. I, <laughs> I'll tell you what he's doing. Dune. And he better be doing it fast. I think that's my first prediction for this year. I think we'll see, maybe not rolling out this year, but I think we will see another premier level Timothy Chalamet horror movie. You know, we got him in Bones and all. It's a little bit Twilight. It's a little bit romance, but they were eating people. A little bit people. Twilight, a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I, th- I think we'll see him in something real terrifying and awful announced in 2024. But different from my prediction, not Damien. Not Damien. <laughs> uh, to, be, to, to be clear, my prediction is that people are going to universally love the new Omen movie. There's going to be a, a, and, a and rewriting of... Uh, yeah, instead of people, instead of people's favorite like demonic possession movie being Exorcist, it's going to be the renaissance of the Omen, I think. That's, that's, that's a very what bold claim. I, well, you know what? I had such I had hopes for the Exorcist. I, I laid it out last year. I was like, I think that Exorcist movie is going to be good. And that movie was a movie. It was bad. <laughs> it was a movie. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be bad. Said it was gonna be bad. I wish bad. we. I wish we did have time to do like. Uh, I don't. I and I don't have anything written down or anything. I wish we had more time to talk about, like maybe some of the bad movies. But I. I didn't start with that category because I was like, is that like? Do we want to be? So we want to punch down. Do we? We don't want to. We right? want to lift up the good stuff. Yeah. So Honestly, we lift up the bad stuff all the time too. Like in true. normal episodes. True. Like Skin and Rink. It's number five on our top five movies list. Look how lifted that thing is. Lift it. Fucking plat- I'll take it. Fucking platform heels. I'll on take that it. Fucker. You talk all the shit you want. <laughs> it's number five, baby. Um, but yeah, so that that'll be my. Uh, I'll, I'll come up with a couple more predictions for next episode. Um, well, one I can put on the books now that I feel pretty confident about is we just last week saw the announcement of Blumhouse combining forces with Atomic Monster. They've been brought in under the same umbrella. I think this is an intelligent consolidation of power, and I think we're going to see more of that. I think you'd be foolish to say that A24 doesn't acquire some 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 more resources considering they're opening their doors to other genres outside of feels bad film and horror film. Yeah, well, most of their other stuff is still horror if you really dig far enough. Yeah. <laughs> um but no, uh, I think I read something about how like a A24 like needs like essentially to make some big business moves soon or like because they like can't really operate at the scale that they're at. Well, I know they've for very been, long. they've been they've been talking about branching out into the more of like a blockbuster, mm-hmm. making looking, just they making they, some, they not like turning one, the whole ship around, but making some. They need like one Spider Man. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> Maybe they should just buy Spider Man from Sony. 
I don't, I don't know. But I, I think we're going to see A24 acquire some, some heavier guns, some more ammunition. Yeah, I uh, again, I think I, what I was like reading in a couple of different places. Uh, basically, that's what they they like need to do like financially. Otherwise, the company's like not gonna like look the same in a few more years. Yeah, well. But hey, I, I if anybody's capable, I, I I'm surprised. I it, it still floors me to this day how like like horror movies, just genre movies in general, just continue to be like shunned like professionally at high levels. And it's like why like like horror makes like some of the most money in filmmaking but it's like taken the least seriously of like anything and i just don't understand like you'd think by now we would have enough people making high level decisions where they can be like yeah it's ju- it's just as good as any other one like it's yeah. it's a movie it's making us money like to, like let it have let it win an oscar like who cares but has there ever been like an there there was but i think like uh it's like all old movies, like the Exorcist and shit that won like Oscars, like back in the day. But like, oh, I'm pretty sure. What like um, modern horror has like won any sort of like really prestigious award? I'm nearly positive, and maybe we can get this checked on factually. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Silence of the Lambs. Okay, that one I would believe, but that one's like again one of those like horror. Like, we still count it as horror, but it's, like, just not horror enough. I'm it. getting confirmation, yes, it did get Oscars. Oh, Academy. Academy oh, was. Academy was. Oh. The the Academy. The Academy. Is that not an Oscar? Mm, is it? What does the Academy give out? What do they give uh, like... I think it's... I think it is. <laughs> the Academy gives out the big A's. <laughs> <laughs> a plus. You did a good movie. Thanks. You get an Academy A. Everyone knows that award. <laughs> Um, I think, I think 2024 will also bring us the the uh, the death of the requels. Oh, you think we're finally? I I think I think it is an Oscar. You know, the Academy Award. Oh, is I was the right. Oscar. I knew it. Making me feel stupid. The, the Os- <laughs> I like the A, a big A that you get to take home. But I, I think 2024 will will be the last nail in the coffin for requels. I think. Yeah, you think it'll be I, that bad? I, huh? I don't think it'll be bad, and I don't. I can't think of any one specifically that is like jumping out in my head. That's like that's gonna be the one. But I, I just think that we have poured a lot of water into that bucket and it's getting really difficult to hold i think somebody's got to put that down and do some new stuff for a little while oh here you go i I, i've actually got a this is this is a wild prediction i don't think it's likely to come true but i'll piggyback on yours i think it will be the death of the prequel i think or the requel i think what will do it is scream seven i think they're gonna cobble together something as fast as possible release it just in time for the year before the year is up and it's gonna it's gonna try to do what Scream Five did, but because it's only been two movies and everyone's really sour on it, it's gonna just bomb completely, and people are gonna be like, "Oh, those requel things don't work anymore." I think I'm gonna counter <laughs> specifically for Scream. I don't think we're gonna see a Scream movie this year. I don't think we're gonna see a Scream movie even announced this year. Ooh. I think they are gonna put as much distance between them and the fact that they fucked over their entire franchise by. <laughs> firing the the lead of a three-part you know arc <laughs> in front of the third movie yeah Man. i i think they're gonna what they're gonna sit fumble, on it dude what a fumble uh i think also terrifier 3 i think terrifier 3 is going to be absolutely stupid big i think terrifier 3 is going to get an extended run in the theaters I think they're going to get I think there'll be more um, attention than they could deal with. I think there'll be special showings of all three Terrifier movies. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I think Terrifier has sort of been doing this like really low key boil, you yeah. know, yeah. where it's been like bubbling for like, a hot minute. I think when that Christmas fucking Terrifier slasher comes out, it's going to blow up more. I, people are finally given... I mean, I'm wearing a Terrifier shirt, sweatshirt right now. It's it's big. I, I think it's going to really pop off. I think... Uh, I, I just, just looking at the way that they rolled two out 
where you had all that fucking buzz about people throwing up in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Anytime you tell one of these motherfuckers <laughs> that they are throwing up in the theaters, <laughs> these magazines and news channels lose their minds. They're like, oh my god. And I think that's going to be to their benefit. It's going to get pushed way, way up into fucking mainstream viewing for horror fans. I can't I can't disagree. I, I, I think this might be the year of art. Yeah. He's not showing up. Is that I know it's a Christmas movie, but is it coming out around Christmas or is it coming I out earlier than that? I think it's coming out late November. Okay, so it's going to be a late edition. It's going to try to sweep in and use re- could, because obviously we know all movies are taking our awards into account. Absolutely. Made, of course. So I think what they're doing is they're trying to sneak in, get that recency bias so that they can win the award for 2024. Our award that they everybody in the industry knows about. Um, I think this is my last prediction, but I think the oversaturation of the Steamboat Willie Mickey oh my horror. God. Are we? Movies, go- we're gonna have to cover it, right? I think we should wait until the like midpoint of the year. We'll collect them all up and do them all at once because I have seen four or five one? different projects come out online being like this is the first horror mickey movie and you're like bro <laughs> like, two more trailer two like more yesterday. got announced like yesterday what are you talking about <laughs> i think we'll put all the the terrible first person video games and bad okay so horror let's mickey stay movies. tuned for for spooky mickey we're gonna wait out as long as possible to collect enough yes you know as many as we can we'll put we'll put a separate board up for it and we'll start putting stuff on that board we get our steamboat willie pepe sylvia board going (laughs) uh but yeah i don't i I, i'll come at you guys with some more predictions next episode uh and we'll maybe we can make like a game out of it or something we'll do a play maybe we'll make it interesting we'll make a little bet Ooh. We'll, we'll do a little 2024 bingo card now we're talking whoever wins we get to do something We'll figure it out. Oh, Maybe boy. we'll do it live next time. We'll come to get with it with punishment suggestions. I'm going to make him watch Skin Marink with his eyes peeled open. No. I will, I'm going to uh, clockwork orange Skin Marink into your head. Oh, my God. I have to win. Now I'm really taking this. <laughs> now seriously. he's terrified. Now I'm, now I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. I know. It's very stupid. stupid. <laughs> I had to start. I had to start the year off right with a stupid, stupid joke. Well... Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2024. 2023 was a great year for the podcast. Thank you all for being here with us. Absolutely. Thank you. We hope you stick around and we hope to, you know, we can add like a bunch of new new acolytes to the to the congregation. Absolutely. We're going to be having a bunch of fun new guests this year. We're going to try and diversify a little bit. We are moving the schedule down to three episodes a month, but with that downtime, you're going to be getting a much better, a higher quality show. Mm-hmm. We might get a sound person in here to come fix our mics mm-hmm. so we sound good every time. Yeah, that would uh, be nice, wouldn't it? We're going to be streaming on Twitch an extra day of the week. Mm-hmm. At least one extra day. Yeah. I'm trying to hop in and do some solo daytime streams for y'all. You know, all you listeners who just want to keep hearing just my voice and you're like, I don't or, really like Eric. Eric. Take or leave Eric. <laughs> How do I hear just Matt? Well, uh, I'll be streaming during the daytime while you're in your little your little shitty cubicle where you judge my best friend, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and if you still want to listen to me, you can listen to me while you procrastinate on your, I don't know, data entry or whatever. <laughs> no, so yeah, catch up with us on Twitch. And seriously, follow us on, on Twitter, on Instagram, join the Discord server. And come chat with us. If there's a topic you want to hear about, let us know. We're willing to pretty much cover anything. We'll do whatever, you know, uh, to an to a degree. Yeah. We'll, we'll cover pretty much whatever if we think there's enough buzz about it. But, yeah, we'd love to see you in the Discord. If you're not a big social media person, that's definitely the place to get at us. It's super personal, you know. It's just a bunch of us in this Discord hanging out we're playing games we're watching movies we're talking horror we're yeah, talking we post news updates all news. sorts of stuff news 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 <laughs> <laughs> we post news uh, we could post nudes though right no 
<laughs> maybe tier two. Maybe uh, tier Patreon two. If you something. if you buy in, <laughs> if you buy, if you buy in, you can get an OnlyFans <laughs> yeah. link. The Devil's Cut OnlyFans. <laughs> it's just it's just dig figure doodles of uh, the little skeleton and the devil, just like. <laughs> But yeah, all the links to all our stuff are down below in the description. Um, and that's it. That's out with 2023, in with 2024. Let's all have fun this year and uh, creep it real. Woo!